You know what these nitrogen needles have in common? They're all a pain in the ass. Hey folks, we're back again with another video. And today's video is gonna be about filling up the IFP chambers on Fox shocks that have pellets using a shock pump and syringes, all right? So this is the worst part about working on a Fox shock, really, at least a DPS in this case, filling up that IFP chamber with syringes, right? So this is gonna be a one-shot video. It's only gonna be about doing this. I'm gonna try and go into as much detail as possible in order for you to be able to successfully get this part of the job done, all right? So next up, let's go into what you will be needing for this job. As for tools, at a minimum, we are gonna need a high pressure shock pump, which I gotta screw, the back came loose again. You need a high pressure one. We gotta go up to 500 PSI with a DPS, right? Ultimately, you can't do that with a regular shock pump. It ends at 350, most of them. So high pressure shock pump for sure. Then we are gonna need syringes and needles. Now, as far as syringe bodies, there's many different types. This one you buy in parts and pieces. It absolutely requires plumber's tape in order to make sure it doesn't leak. This one you buy them as is, and when you buy them brand new, they do come with their own needles. I'm gonna get into that in a second. And this one's brand new. I've never bought it before. This is by far the smallest version of a syringe body that I've seen, and it's super light as well. So I'm hoping this works out a little bit better, okay? Now, if you notice over here, there's two different types of needles, and there are two main types of needles. One of them is your typical needle, which is a plastic hub needle, and the other one is a metal hub needle. The metal hub needles technically are more solid than the plastic hub needles, but both of them will absolutely break. It's just a question of time. Sometimes they'll break the first time you insert them. Other times you could use them quite a few times before they break, but they will break. What you can do is take epoxy, and essentially extend the hub body further out. By doing that, you give it more strength at the base, right? In other words, there's more of an even wobble or um, an even force applied as opposed to just one single force applied at the base because they always break at the base, these things, right? Now, you also notice that the hubs are longer and that the plastic ones are shorter. I wish they made shorter hub versions. I like the shorter ones better. I think they're more stable and solid. I just haven't seen one that's shorter, right? They're like one and a half inch as opposed to one inch. So this one over here is really solid when you put the epoxy on it. So again, these things, the needles are literally squeezed and epoxied onto the hub body. So we're just extending that epoxy finish or end point in order to give it a more stable, solid base to it, okay? So you're gonna need needles. Now, when it comes to needles, you do not want to attempt this job with just one needle. When you're gonna buy your needles, buy multiple needles, whichever ones you decide to get, okay? These things break any time. They are extremely unpredictable. Like I said, sometimes they'll break just when you put it into the pellet, right? So you, you want better chances of being successful at this, buy needles, I would definitely buy three needles minimum. Five needles would probably be better off. They're not all that expensive and you would wanna make sure you have the assurance of having a backup for when it breaks. Cause like I said, these will break. Now, another thing you're gonna wanna get is extra pellets, sure. Your damper body rebuild kit comes with a pellet, but if those needles break, you can only use these pellets so many times. I would say no more than three personally. If somebody disagrees with me, please let me know. In fact, after two times, you're taking a risk in my opinion. So you could buy these individually for about a buck or two bucks a piece. And I would absolutely just have like four or five on hand, right? Or you could buy a 50 pack, 803-01-651. This is an old pack and honestly, I don't know if these things have a life, like if they harden over time even more, I don't think they do, but this is a really old pack. So anyway, I mean, I'm sure it still works fine without any issues. Chances are I probably won't be needing one. And the last tool that we will be needing is a pellet retaining screw tool that allows us to insert the needle into the, through the screw, the, the retaining screw and into the pellet, okay? Now, you could go buy Foxes. It only, it only sells as this piece over here. This is like a five cent bolt that you screw into it. Uh, but this is very expensive. Now, technically, 
you can make your own. And I've used this in the past a long time ago. The only difference is if I was to build this today, I'd make it completely different. I would not cut a hole down the middle at the bottom over here. What I would do is cut off, take a 5, 30 seconds Allen, cut it in half over here to shorten this part, and then grind a line right down the middle of it. And basically, guys, you literally end up with the exact same tool. And this would probably cost you a buck. And if you have a grinder, even better. All right. So outside of that, there pretty much is no other tools that we need. So remember, high pressure shock pump, choose your body. I'm going to test this one out today since the lightest one. I have no idea how well it will work. This one is pretty heavy, actually. And this one's a little bit lighter than this one. I've used both. Both actually work. Make sure you have extra syringes. Make sure you have extra pellets. And, uh, well, either make your own or go buy Shock Fox's tool over here in order to be able to insert the needle. All right. Next up. Let's start filling up the IFP with air. When it comes to filling up the chamber, we have two options. We could use a vise, okay? You could strap this guy down to the vise real tight, okay? And then you install the, well, you use your tool, and then you ins insert, I should say, not install, your needle into the screw through the tool, right? And you pump from above as high up as you can, right? Make sure you have a straight line. The problem with doing that, in my opinion, is once you get past 350 PSI, this is going to become a bit of a struggle up in the air, right? It requires a lot of pressure, guys. And ultimately, that's going to force this whole hose to constantly just want to wobble. And once that wobbles, that's what usually breaks the tip over here. Now, again, I put epoxy on here in order to strengthen the tips even more. But still, this will wobble. Like I said, I like the shorter ones because they wobble less. Um, again, it's a, it's, it's a tough one. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it will work, but you take a chance, a great, a bigger chance in my opinion of actually breaking the actual needle. Okay. Your other option is just, just, just to do it on the ground and use the table as leverage, right? So essentially what you're going to do is connect everything together and just push up and down on the table. Trust me when I tell you it is way, way easier to get the 500 PSI and this thing will barely want to move putting less strain on the syringe base, okay? Or the needle base, I should say. So that's how I'm gonna do it over here to show you guys how that works. To start off, what we wanna do is we're gonna take our, whether you make your own or use Fox's, we're gonna make sure that our bleed port is completely shut, okay? So it's all the way down, right? And then when it's all the way down, what we're gonna do, in fact, I'm gonna do it like this, Actually, I'm going to leave it where it was. We're going to open it up a quarter turn about. Let's say an eighth to a quarter turn, right? So we're here. We're going to bring it to about here, right? Just like that. Now, another thing we want to do is make sure that the hole is parallel with, in line, I should say, with the actual syringe when we insert it to put, again, less pressure on the syringe. Now, to do that, you just hold the eyelet, and basically, you're just going to twist the body until when he sits naturally on its own, it wants to just naturally sit straight, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pump and connect it to the needle body. Make sure he's all the way down. I have no idea if this guy needs plumbing tape inside. I haven't put any. I just bought this guy from Schmitty Racing uh, not that long ago. I've never used him. It's gonna be the first time that I've used him, okay? So he's tightly put together, all right? I'm gonna let the camera cool off and I will be back so we can connect this together. Now, I just realized during the tool section, I forgot one tool right here, safety glasses. Do not do this job without glasses, guys. We're dealing with needle, we're dealing with pressure. Wear your safety glasses, do not take a chance, all right? So I already got some on. Next, so again, we had shut down our bleed screw and we open them up about an eighth to a quarter turn just like that all right now we have our system connected we're going to take our cap off all right and now what we're going to do is insert okay before i actually insert them let me give you the idea of the workflow here we're going to insert them and when we insert them we're going to tighten them back down pretty hard, nearly all the way, not absolutely completely all the way, but really hard because the way the pellet works, it essentially gets squeezed by pressure. So when we put the needle in there, it's going to create a hole. 
But then when we put pressure on that pellet and we remove that needle, that hole will get squished together and done. That's what literally stops it from leaking, right? The problem is pulling them out becomes very tough, okay? So you're going to expect uh, to, to use some really good force to pull them out. That's the only negative about having them on the ground as opposed to having the shock in a vise and pulling the entire pump up in order to create the separation, right? Here, what you're gonna to need to do ultimately is at the end when we're done filling them up is get a good hold of the shock, hold them down really good on the table basically, and then get a good hold of the shock pump and we're gonna pull them out straight out as hard as you can basically to pull them out. Just make sure that you don't stab yourself in any single which way or form, right? If you pull them out far enough, you shouldn't have that problem. So again, when we're done, we insert them, close this up, pump them up, hold this down hard to the table, and then pull the shock pump with some really good force, okay? Now, sometimes what happens, and again, this epoxy will help, sometimes what happens when you put this guy, because these are weak, when you screw this guy back down and you tighten them up in here, sometimes this will completely separate from the hub. Right? especially with the plastic ones. I've seen that happen multiple times. Again, these things are weak. This is a crappy solution. I wish Fox didn't do it, but it is what it is. Again, we're gonna try and figure out if you guys could do this successfully each time you work on your shocks. All right, so now let's go through the whole process. So again, we had them closed. We took them, we opened them up about an eighth of a turn to a quarter turn, right? Somewhere over there, all right? Now we're gonna take our needle. We're gonna put them in the middle. If he's too stiff, then you, that means you need to open them up just a little bit more. Now these long needles are a little bit, see what I mean, how they bend? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't like these long needles. I probably just broke this one, to be honest. Okay, now I'm in, right? So now I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna close him just about all the way, okay? When, when you go all the way, just turn him back a little bit, like just a few millimeters just to loosen up some pressure so it doesn't make it too hard on the needle to pull them out, all right? So now I'm gonna take the needle, hopefully I didn't just break the head on it, and I'm gonna pump him up to 500 PSI. And if you notice, this is barely moving. And once you get past 350, it's gonna need some real good force. Okay, 400. So far, so good. 450. Now I have a leak. I hear it. Yep, I'm not going to be able to go past 450. Again, you can hear the leak. Question is, where's the leak coming from? Is it coming from here? Is it coming from here? I'll be back. I am back. I want to make sure that the leak isn't coming from here. Like I said, I've never used that one before, so I got some soapy water on it. Let's pump this guy up. Yep, he is coming from here somewhere. Try that again. Okay, you know what? I might get lucky over here. It might be just this connection here. From what I could tell, this was a little loose, but most of the air was coming out of the screw point into the shock pump. And I ended up putting plumber's tape inside there, right? Hopefully I'm tied down. Hopefully this thing's not broken right now. We'll find out. And we're still in there pretty tight. And let's try this again. Hopefully that took care of the problem. looks like that took care of the problem guys I am at 500 and I am not losing air actually I'm losing air at an extremely extremely slow rate 
So let's go back up to 500 again and act quickly. So right now I'm at 500 and it's barely moving actually. So now what are we gonna do? Again, we're gonna hold this down as hard as we can. We're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna pull him out that way as hard as we can. One, two, make sure he's tightened down. One, two, three, and again, it's gonna be tight. One, two, three, and oh, he's too tight. Loosen him. All that air you heard came out of here. And we are tight. Cool. Now, let's test them. Now, to test them, usually I would put them on the dyno. Ultimately, you guys probably don't have a dyno. Let's just test them on the vise, okay? So we're gonna clamp them in real good, make sure he's in there real solid. Put them in the fully open position and make sure that your rebound is in the fully open position as well, right? And then, what we're gonna do is apply pressure straight down and you should feel quite a bit of pressure. Should sink, there we go. And he comes up real nice. Look at that, whoa. He definitely makes it all the way down. Yep. So we don't hydro lock, we are good. Put him all the way down. Now what we can do, put him in the locked. He should not, oh, yep. He does not move one set, one millimeter. Let's put him in the pedal in the middle. Should move. Oh, that needs a lot more pressure. It moves, but it needs a lot more pressure, so that works. Now let's close the rebound the whole way. Actually, these clicks feel a lot better than before. A lot better than before. So now we should be able to sink them all the way down, but he should take his time coming up. And there you go. Done. A successful syringe ifp chamber fill uh, guys i hate this thing you know i hate this thing i've said it i don't know how many times over but ultimately it is what it is if you decide to do it this way if you don't have a uh, nitrogen kit right which is much more expensive than this it can be done this way but i'm telling you right now don't fool yourself into thinking that you're going to be able to do it with one syringe anything could happen it's not easy. The shorter needles, I like them better. This setup, I don't know if I'm a big fan of it. This is really nice and light, which is really cool, but I don't think it makes a difference when you're on the ground. When you're on the air, I'm sure it'll make a lot of difference actually, because it won't want to flop around as much just from all the added weight down here, right? So again, pain in the butt, very doable. Just make sure you have extra syringes and make sure you have extra pellets and make sure you're wearing your safety glasses okay guys seriously if you like the video please click the like button click the subscribe button to see more videos click the bell button what ding in order to be notified when new videos get released and more videos are coming all right until then i hope all is well with all of you and we will be talking to you soon have a good one take care bye